let's go to the next part. So the next part is the IELTS uh, challenge. And we, were, we are also going to hear a audio clip and answer some questions. So yeah, let's hear the first okay. one. Okay, right. Now, obviously insurance is an important thing to consider and our companies are able to offer very good rates in a number of different all-inclusive packages. Uh, sorry, could you explain a bit more? <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, there's really three rates according to quality of insurance cover. There's the highest comprehensive cover, which is premium rate, then there's standard rate, and then there's economy rate. That one will only cover the cost of the contents second hand. Oh, I've been stung before with economy insurance, so um, I'll go for the highest. Mm -hmm. And can I just check, would you want home delivery or to a local depot, or would you want to pick it up at the nearest port? The port would be fine. I've got transport that end. Fine. And will you be paying by credit card? Can I pay by check? Okay, that was a short one. So the questions are, um, the lady was talking about insurance coverage. It's a, yet again a yes or no um, type of question. And then the second question is, the guy will pay using a debt card. So again, yes or no. Okay, the results are in. Um, so the first question, uh, yes, one by 97%. I, I believe that's the highest we've gotten so far. Um, also, second one, uh, no one by 56%. Um, let's see what the instructors think. So I'm with the audience. Short this one. <laughs> yeah, go, go for it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go with the audience. Yeah, um, I agree. She was talking about insurance coverage and she asked him all about it and said insurance repeatedly. And we all love these conversations with people if we want insurance coverage. So, um, but at the, right at the end, she asked if he'd like to use a credit card. So maybe if someone only heard the word card, they might go with debit card. But um, he did ask if he could use a check, which no one does anymore, but okay, <laughs> use a check. Um, is that in the United Kingdom there is still a thing not in America nobody's doing Even, that I was at a, a Best Buy a uh, couple weeks ago which is a store to buy electronics and the guy in front of me had a check in front of him and he was uh, writing it so I guess people still use it just I guess older generations but yeah my internet was cutting out so I think I heard if he if um, I heard the insurance uh agent asking him do you want to pay with a credit card and i think he asked if he can use a check instead um so I, I think the answer should be no to the second question and for the first question yeah obviously it was about insurance coverage and about full coverage and comprehensive coverage and all that fun stuff yeah yeah that seems um the first one seems uh right with the majority uh because she in the beginning she was talking about insurance coverage and then the guy did pay with a check and like i'm pretty sure we all mentioned no one does that anymore um i'm pretty sure on, the last time oh actually every single time i see someone do that it's some old person at walmart or something so um you're just jealous that you don't have a checkbook that's why <laughs> <laughs> no that's not true <laughs> i actually gotta say that the first and for the moment only time in my life that i've used a check it was here in America, like a, a, a few weeks ago, but it was, you know, for, for big purchases. So, but yeah, I guess no one uses it like at, at, to, to do groceries shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Pietro, you got put into the old people category. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I am. No, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they made you get a check. That's why you paid with a check. <laughs> exactly exactly now, now i have have this this checkbook now now i need to use them you know otherwise <laughs> oh, they expire huh uh, i'm gonna buy candies with checks mm -hmm. oh, you can send me a check if you want i can send you <laughs> <laughs> that was really great that was amazing um 
I guess we can move to the second sample. Um... You will hear an extract from a talk given to a group who are going to stay in the UK. Good evening and welcome to the British Council. My name is John Parker and I've been asked to talk to you briefly about certain aspects of life in the UK before you actually go there. So I'm going to talk first about the best ways of making social contacts there. Now, you might be wondering why it should be necessary. After all, we meet people all the time. But when you're living in a foreign country, it can be more difficult, not just because of the language, but because customs may be different. If you're going to work in the UK, you will probably be living in private accommodation, so it won't be quite so easy to meet people. But there are still things that you can do to help yourself. First of all, you can get involved in activities in your local community, join a group of some kind. For example, you'll probably find that there are theatre groups who might be looking for actors, set designers and so on. Or if you play an instrument, you could join music groups in your area. Or if you like the idea of finding out about local history, there'll be a group for that too. These are just examples. And the best place to get information about things like this are either the town hall or the public library. Libraries in the UK perform quite a broad range of functions nowadays. They're not just confined to lending books, although that's their main role, of course. OK. So the questions are, um, the group is planning to visit the A, United Kingdom, uh, B, France, C, USA, D, uh, Azerbaijan. Um, and the second question is, the speaker told the group that the best place to get information is the public library. So it's a yes or no question. Okay, so uh, United Kingdom won by 90% for the first question and yes, won by 82% for the second question. Let's hear our instructors. Yeah, we, we, we definitely agree with both, mm -hmm. of the, both of the answers. I guess United, you, he doesn't say United Kingdom, he says UK. And I guess if you're not paying attention, it might sound like USA, but for the most part, if you're paying attention, he says UK, so. Even, ju even just because of the accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That definitely gives it away, I'd agree with that. Uh, that second question, I've got to say though, could be tricky, I mean, it's not wrong. The answer is yes, but he said uh, the town hall and the public library were both the best places. Um, though he's a liar, Google is always the best place. <laughs> True. And pubs as well. In the UK, pubs are very reliable source of information yes. as well. Pubs? pubs. Yeah. Oh, that's where I would be if I went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you can talk. Thank you. I agree with that. It's United Kingdom, UK. And uh, the second question is also right, but as a person who lived in the UK, that's not definitely public library if you want to get information. And British people are very nice. You can ask any question to random uh, persons. They will say anything uh, if you want. Yeah, um, as long as, of course, you know the abbreviation. First one seems pretty st uh, straightforward. Um, second one, he, he most definitely mentioned two of them, threw me off again. But um, yeah, I'd, I guess I'd go with yes. Um, uh, even though there were two mentioned, I guess the library, since, you know, books are so fun, that's the, it's the most, um, it's the best place you could go. Um, yeah, that was, I guess, the, the answers to those questions. Um, so yeah, this is the third sample and let's hear the audio clip. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, did you find it hard studying with the Open University? You mean because you're studying on your own most of the time? Mm. Well, it took me a while to get used to it. I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation because it's so different from school. There's no one saying, why haven't you written your assignment yet? And that sort of thing. Oh, dear. You'll learn it, Paul. Another thing was that I got very good at time management because... 
I had to fit time for studying round a full-time job. Well, I'm hoping to change to working part time, so that'll help.、Mm. What makes it easier is that the degree is made up of modules, so you can take time off between them if you need to. It isn't like a traditional three or four year course where you've got to do the whole thing of it in one go.、Oh, that's good, cause I'd like to spend six months travelling next year. Huh? <laughs> It's all right for some. <laughs> Then, even though you're mostly studying at home, remember you've got tutors to help you, and from time to time there are summer schools. They usually last a week. They're great because you meet all the other people struggling with the same things as you.、Oh. I've made some really good friends that way. <laughs> Sounds good.、Uh, so how do I apply? Okay, so that's the audio clip. And the questions are. Um, the guy wants to spend eight months traveling. So yes or no. And the second question is: They were talking about studying at open universities. Again, this is a yes or no、um, question. So let's see what the audience thinks. Okay. So the answers are in、uh, for the first question. No one by seventy nine percent. Um, and the second question, yes, one by eighty-five percent.、Um, yeah, let's see what our instructors think. So I, for the first one,、um, it's no, I agree with no because he mentioned six months traveling, and then for the second one,、um, I heard the lady say, even though you're studying at home. Um, so for me, I would disagree with the majority, and I think it's no, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I、uh, I think it's no. I I don't think he wants to spend. I think I heard six months、uh, traveling. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree with the thirty one people that voted for no. And the second question. Uh, they were talking about studying at open universities. I, to be honest, I don't know.、Uh, so I did hear him say it at first. Actually, he,、uh, right? it was the very first sentence of the video. Like the, so, if you missed like that, just that very first sentence, it, they never said it again. Yeah, yeah, Emily is right.、Uh, I I also heard, and she talked that、uh, it's hard, little it's hard because no one is asking about your assignments, anything else. So you need to do your own time management. So Emily is right about the second question. Yeah, the first question、um, I heard six months, and、uh, second question the first sentence completely blew right past me.、Um, uh, I probably. From everything else that I heard, I probably guess no. But then I didn't know the first sentence was even there, so、um, I'd go with the majority. What threw me off is that it's the second question, not the first question. Even though the answer to the second question was the first sentence in the video, so I was like, "You know, I, I'm not even familiar with the term open university. I've heard online, which is kind of what they were describing, but open." Sounds like it should be like outside, maybe, or something.、But、I, I heard that's. I'm not familiar with open universities either. Yeah, it sounds like something out of out in the nature, one with the、yeah. wild. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess we can move on to the very last part of today's session. So, um. It's the radio challenge, and we have one more audio clip to listen to to answer these questions. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Amika Narker, and welcome back to Brave Talk. In today's episode, we're talking about a brave story about my best friend and an outrageous fire. When my friend was walking down the street on a normal sunny day, she saw smoke coming out of a house, and she was like, "Maybe it's a barbecue." Because that's what other people thought at first too, but later she saw smoke and flames, more of them just coming out of the house, and she was like, "This is not a barbecue." So she called for help. She called her parents and she called her neighbors, which is what most people would do if they see a fire. 
So while they're taking it out, the fire department's on their way and everything, and they're still trying to take it out. It's been like a while now. And they're like, why isn't this fire dying down and everything? So they found out it's actually an electrical fire, so you need sand for that, and they had no idea. They were just like scared that it's a fire and that you take it out because the whole neighborhood would have gone down. So the first thing they did when the fire department took it out is they all congratulated her because without her help, no one would have realized that there was actually like a bad fire going on. So the next week, the, the fire department and our community surprised her with the mayor, the fire department, and the news channel. So when everyone came and they congratulated her, and the news channel was asking her and her family questions about what they felt, about what happened. So then she got to try on some gear, which is really fun and cool. And the mayor and the fire department, both of them, gave her an award that said, you're a hero, because she actually did save the community. Okay, so the questions are, um, the smoke was because of A, barbecue, B, fire in the house, C, fireworks, D, all choices are wrong. And the second question is, when you see smoke coming out of a house, you should call A, Mosalah, um, B, firefighters, C, Pio Petro, D, Ed Sheeran. I gotta lie, these are really interesting. <laughs> I vote for Mo Salah. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran here as well. <laughs> hey, let's vote for Pio Petro. <laughs> I mean, Ed Sheeran and Mo Salah may not put out the fire, but it'll at least be a memory. <laughs> I agree. Okay, the results are in. So the first question, um, fire in the house won by 38%. Um, the second question, firefighters won by 97%. And I see that someone actually voted for Pio Petro. So yeah, that one person, you're amazing. <laughs> I think his name will send him a, a nice gift. <laughs> so yeah, let's hear you guys. Uh, so... This is one of the few questions where we get like a lot of mixed opinions. So we have 11 people that voted for barbecue, 14 for fire in the house, and one for fireworks, and 11 for all choices are wrong. So the girl said that at the beginning, she thought it was the smoke was from barbecue, but then later they found out that it was an electrical fire. Uh, so if it was an electrical fire, it's not from barbecue. And uh, I guess it can be from the fire in the house, but the fire came from electric fire. Uh, and it's not fireworks. So I, I don't know if I should vote for fire in the house or if all the choices are wrong. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So yeah, I think the thing that threw some someone off was the the fact that the first thing that was mentioned is barbecue and then i th i think it's it's fire in the house uh i'm pretty i'm pretty convinced and then the origin of the fire was probably some electrical you know yeah. appliance or something in the house uh yeah. but i guess maybe the, the people who chose as, uh, all choices are wrong is because of they they were looking for the exact match uh, yeah electrical electric fire. Fire, yeah uh, yeah. I also agree with this idea, and yeah, when it comes to the second one, we know the answer, but I would want, like to call Mohamed Salah, I'm a big fan of Liverpool, and Ed Sheeran by fire parties. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd most likely agree with, uh, well, actually, obviously, I'd most, I'd most likely agree with fire in the house, um, because, I mean, I could see why people got thrown off, like, fire in the house and barbecue were mentioned. Um, I don't remember fireworks. Maybe there were fireworks. I don't remember them though. Um, but I can, that's most likely why people would have gotten thrown off because barbecue was like practically the second to first sentence there. And then, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's pretty logical to call firefighters if, if you, if there's a fire. <laughs> most of all, we'll just kick the fire out of there, you know. Just because we don't have Ed Sheeran's number. That's, that's yeah. the only reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I had 
Mo Salah or Ed Sheeran's number, I wouldn't wait for a fire to call them. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. That was great. That was very great. I like this discussion. Um, so yeah, um, the audience, so you guys have a homework. Please watch this lecture and Dr. Yasip El Shaib's interview. I believe it is uh, tomorrow and it will be moderated by our very own Ms. Rahima. Um, and you can watch it on Arab Guru YouTube channel and please answer the quiz in your Google Classroom. So that, thank you guys. This, is, this marks the end of our first session. And I just would like to um, thank the uh, instructors for being here and being part of this great project. Also, thank you attendees um, for being here and um, uh, just participating very actively. Um, stay safe, wear a mask and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shahad. And thank you for all the, the instructors and for all the students and for Dr. Ahmed al garhi for organizing this. So thank you. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.